So this is a summarized review of the first episode of Netflix's Ancient Apocalypse. I have two other videos, each are about an hour long, give or take, and they go into much more detail, but this is going to be the, my like three biggest issues with the claims made in the first episode of Ancient Apocalypse. Before I begin, I want to really thank everyone who has come to watch this video. This video is not going to cover everything, so like I said, you can watch one of the other two videos if you think I have missed something. And I want to apologize. February is a very busy time of the month, time of the year for me. Uh, it's when a lot of grants are due and I'm prepping to give papers at conferences and everything like that. So my schedule is kind of very busy, and because of that, I wasn't able to get this episode put together um, like I wanted to. And again, to start, I'll give a little background on myself. I currently hold a master's degree in archaeology. I'm working towards my PhD. My research primarily focuses on hunter-gatherer societies in Southeast and North America, and I specialize in lithics and landscape analysis. So with that, we can kind of jump right into it. So the first big one with me is the lack of definitions. Throughout the episode, Hancock uses a lot of terms like simple, civilization, or mainstream archaeology. He will go on to say, say things like mainstream archaeology will say that civilization began about 6,000 years ago, and then he produces evidence that he says counters that claim. The issue with these terms is he never defines them. To know if the classification of simple hunter-gatherers is accurate or inaccurate description of the population, we need to know what the difference is between simple, normal, and complex hunter-gatherers, but he never gives these definitions. He again goes on to use the term civilization, particularly when he discusses when archaeologists say that civilization begun in a certain time frame, but he never defines it. Just the time I've spent discussing the topic with people, there's definitions that vary dramatically. When Hancock says archaeologists believe that civilization began around 6,000 years ago, what he means is when we define a civilization as having a population with a state-level political organization, standing military, written language, monumental ar architecture, and agricultural uh, subsistence practices, among other things, those people with a combination of all of those attributes didn't seem to appear till around 6,000 years ago. So the last would be mainstream archaeology. So when Hancock uses this term, he only is referring to the work of academic archaeologists because at least in North America, about 80 to 85 percent of all archaeologists aren't in, ac aren't in academia. If Then if you have academics who disagree about a particular site and each academic archaeologist is still at a university and publishing papers, training students, teaching students, and all these other things that come with a successful career in academia, because an, an argument that I see a lot is that people are like, oh, well, someone made this and then they lost all credibility. They, they lost all their funding. There was no idea um, that they didn't know how bad it would come back at them and the kind of the Clovis first argument is used a lot but if I were just to look at Poverty Point for instance a site that I'll discuss about in a later video and that I've uh, researched myself is there's very debating arguments about what Poverty Point is what function it has and the people who established the site and each there's at least four major um, arguments for that, you know, one was that it was, at the beginning it was said that the Olmecs traveled up and built it, and then that was refuted by another who said, oh no, it was the first sign of a Native Native American from, from North America um, chiefdom that was that constructed it. And then it went into, no, it was actually a trade fair location by hunter-gatherers, and then it was, no, it was a vacant ceremonial center, and then it was, no, there was actually, there was a population there of religious um, leaders that were, had lived there. And each of those people who made those arguments that conflicted with previous argument went on to have astounding careers. Uh, John Gibson taught for a long time, continued to work on the site for a very long time. Ed Jackson, who trained me as an archaeologist, went on to have a career and have students. I am one of them, and he had many others. Uh, T.R. Kidder, who, who's gone on to have 
a number of, of excellent students and still works on Poverty Point affiliated sites like J-Town, all of these people all argued against each other about what Poverty Point was, but yet all of them had successful careers. So when, you know, these arguments were like, well, if archaeologists disagree, then their careers are ruined. It's not the case. It's, if, if I'm being honest, it's usually the opposite. So with this, if most archaeologists are in, you know, CRM, cultural resource management, or federal positions, and only, you know, about 15% are in academia, then what? It, who is mainstream archaeology? Because if some, and then if within those 15%, if a lot of them are disagreeing with each other, who is mainstream archaeology? Because the vast majority of archaeologists aren't in academia, and then the 15% that are typically argue with one another. So who is mainstream archaeology? Who are making these statements? He never tells us. So with that, we kind of get to issue number two. So issue number two I have are the descriptions about the voids and the chambers within um, or below Gunung Pong, the archaeological site. This, my main issue is, is that even Hancock, Dr. Nata Wajaja, everyone agrees that this is a volcano, that the, the natural formation is a volcano. Um, there's columnar joints, we, we see that in all this discussion throughout, and then he goes on to say that, you know, these are man-made structures. Well, I begin by saying that you know, I totally agree that there's likely voids and chambers within the volcano um, that is below Gunung Padong. What Hancock never discusses, and neither does not Dr. Nada Wajaja, is that these voids form naturally across the world in volcanoes. So I'll just show a quick image from an article that was published about um, a volcano in the Caribbean. And what we can see here is that you're seeing rectangular light shaped magma chambers forming. So with that and with the agreeance that both Hancock and Dr. Natawajaja say that this is a volcano, it's kind of creating a, a difficulty in understanding why they think this is a human made and not a naturally forming occurrence. So nowhere does Hancock or Dr. Natawajaja show anything related to humans creating the chambers. So all that's actually really being shown is that there's voids inside of a volcano, which I would assume, and I, I hope everyone does, which is kind of expected. It's a volcano. Um, but Hancock never mentions any of that. So with that, we'll get on to the last issue. So the last issue I have with this is the radiocarbon dates from the drilling cars. So to begin, I'll show um, this is an actual released information by Dr. Natawajaja about the radiocarbon dates from his drilling cores. So if we just take a quick glimpse of this, as you can see, there's a lot of issues with it. We have several instances of the top dating to much older than a layer below it, which I think this alone is to show that there's some issues with the, the dating that Dr. Natawajaja um, is using, and, or at least is prone to errors. And with this, I can't think of a human reason that this could, this could have been happening and things like that. What I think is occurring is that these are the, from the creation of magma chambers, it's moving the earth around in there, which you will see naturally, but you wouldn't get radiocarbon dates like this in this expansive and this deep from something that was, you know, done by humans. This would, this would be something that's, you know, occurring naturally. So later in the episode, Dr. Natawajada says that he believes the site dates back to around 24,000 years ago. Yet, if we see this, there's at least a layer that dates back to almost 28,000 years ago. So why is he only saying 24,000 years ago? That's another issue I have is why is he selecting then certain particular instances of it instead of you know, showing all the data and giving all the data. Later, they mentioned that they dated organic material clearly associated with construction, but they never tell you what that actually is. In these results, we see that they 
dated soil. All of this was dated through soil. So we can assume that all the soil at the site was clearly associated with construction because that's, that's the inference they're making when they go, all of this, everything we dated has is clearly associated with building material used by humans at the site. And then they dated soil. So are they saying that all the soil at the site, every bit of it was, con was used for construction because that doesn't seem like you could get accurate information by making that assumption. Unfortunately, we're never told why that assumption is being made. Hancock just says it is, and then the audience should just believe him without him providing any data on it whatsoever. So the next thing is that Hancock mentions that around 15 meters in depth dates to around 11,600 years ago. So if we just look at the data, that there's nothing around that date. If you were to increase it or decrease it for about, about 2,000 years, then yeah, you then you have something that dates around 9,600 years ago, not 11,600 years ago. So to me, at least, this feels like he's misleading and lying about the data to make the audience believe his theory about the site and the civilization that he proposes that was in Sunderland and it's around the time he wants because that is the date he positions for his, you know, um, theory about a civil, an ancient advanced civilization. So he just gives you that date and says it tells you it dates to that. But if we just take a moment to just read the data here, it doesn't date to that. So I feel like that's, that's lying to everyone or misrepresenting data. And, you know, if you follow Graham on, uh, Twitter or anything like that, he says he never misinterprets data. He never lies about anything. So what's his answer for this? So all the data from archaeologists and geologists he brought on that, that think the site is older than what archaeologists believe, it just doesn't match Hancock's theory. And so more importantly, because of this, I think everyone should be upset about it. I would be upset about it if I personally believed in Hancock's theories or believed in the work of Dr. Natawajaja or anyone like that and then he goes and lies about it because I feel like that at that point my trust would be broken if I or if I aligned myself with Hancock's theories and things like that when he directly lies and there's evidence right here that he's directly lying about the information the radiocarbon dates I would be upset about that so with that, the next big thing I'll go into is, as always, is the things I would need to see in order to believe that um, Hancock's theories or Dr. Nadavajada's theories are accurate representations of what's going on. So the first thing I would need to see is clear association between humans and the voids located within the chambers. This could be done through locating tools or geophysical surveys that could identify variations in the soil that, would, that wouldn't occur naturally. To believe that the site dates back to around 24,000 years ago, I would need some type of uniformity in the radiocarbon dates. Those dates would be also need to be something other than soil, so we know that that was actively you know, manipulated or created by humans. So neither of these do I feel are unreasonable to kind of ask for either, it's for me to believe their claim, so I would ask anyone doing archaeological research to to do the same. So that's it for this one. I'm working on a video on Poverty Point next. I know um, it's touched on in Ancient Apocalypse, but this one will really be just be a site that I'm looking into with some of sharing some of my research and some more of the history of the archaeological history of the site. And I'm hoping it's about 20, 30 minutes. So because I'll really enjoy talking about it. It's a site I, I truly um, enjoy and, and love. So once again, thank all y'all for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully this video was shorter so it's easier to share with other people and things like that. So thank y'all. Bye.